In this video I will tell you everything I know about AMD's upcoming Radeon RX 7800 XT graphics card. That includes its specs, performance in games, release date and price. But first, a quick message from a sponsor. Buy your Windows 10 or 11 key for less from cdkeyoffer.com at the link in the description below. Use code IV20 to get a 25% discount that brings the price down to as low as $16. You can securely check out with PayPal and receive your Windows key in minutes, ready to be activated on your PC. Now back to our topic. RX 7800 XT is based on Navi 32 design, which uses the same chiplet technology as Navi 31 found in the recently released RX 7900 XTX and XT graphics cards. The difference is in the details. 7800 XT GPU has a smaller compute die, which is a 5 nanometer chip by TSMC. It is packaged alongside four Infinity Cache chips, also produced by TSMC, but on a cheaper 6 nanometer process. Here is how it compares to the RX 7900 XTX GPU, which has a larger 5 nanometer compute die and not four, but six Infinity Cache 6 nanometer chips. Since 7800 XT uses less materials and parts, it will cost less to manufacture. But do not expect a bargain out of AMD. I think it should be clear by now that both AMD and Nvidia decided that they will do their best to milk this generation of graphics cards for everything it is worth. I expect to see RX 7800 XT priced at $700 to $750 when it launches in a few months time. Unfortunately, I do not have an exact date to share with you just yet, so subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for that update. RX 7800 XT has the following specs. 3840 shader cores, 60 ray tracing cores, 16 GB of GDDR6 memory across a 256-bit bus, and 64 MB of infinity cache. TDP will certainly be below 300 watts, which means that recommended power supply for this graphics card should be between 650 and 700 watts. As for the performance, on average it should be close to RX 6950XT in the best case scenario, and about as fast as RX 6900XT in the worst case scenario. This means that the 7800XT will be competing with Nvidia's RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti. To put things into perspective, let's have a look at how this kind of performance may look like in the games you might be familiar with. In Cyberpunk 2077, on high preset at 4K resolution, you should expect to see between 47 and 51 FPS average. That is with ray tracing turned off. Nvidia's RTX 40 series cards will have an upper hand when it comes to performance with ray tracing enabled. Expect to see between 83 and 90 FPS average in Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 4K on the highest quality preset. I would like to remind you that AMD has ongoing issues with the performance of its RX 7000 series graphics cards. You can see the inconsistencies in the benchmark charts. In some games, RX 7900 XTX is much closer to RTX 4090, but overall RX 7000 series cards are much further behind their RTX 40 series counterparts than AMD initially anticipated. Something went wrong, and AMD Driver's development team is working on resolving those issues. So, do not be surprised if we see a much better performance out of RX 7800 XT if they manage to make a good progress. However, I will have to see it to believe it. Certainly, there is a possibility that they will not be able to improve the performance to the level the company initially expected out of the RX 7000 series graphics cards. And it is not like Nvidia drivers team are sitting on their hands either. RTX 40 series cards performance will be getting better with every update over the coming months as well. Let me know in the comments what do you think about all this. And if you enjoyed this video then you know what to do. It was I, Vadim, until next time.